Okay, welcome to another live episode of the Engineers HVAC podcast. And I'm Tony Mormino. And today it's a Friday afternoon in Marshall, North Carolina. And I thought we would talk about, you know, getting back to basics with the properties of air. So I was sitting around here. I actually just did a YouTube live on the same topic. So I thought I would, while I had everything out, do this on LinkedIn too. So properties of air, dry bulb, wet bulb, relative humidity, humidity and dew point. That's what we're going to talk about today. And I've got some props today. So this is super exciting. I'm like a science teacher here with all this stuff. So if you are, you know, I always like to start out with the the why this is important. And, you know, a lot of people might look at this and say, man, this is child's play. I've been around a while, but constantly surprised of the, you know, people still get confused a little bit with the difference between humidity and relative humidity and dew point. So, you know, that's why we share this a lot. And the purpose of our podcast and our YouTube channel is to educate and empower the HVAC community. So that's why we do a lot of educational type content. And we thank you all who support us and join us. So I'm going to go through the five basic properties of air that I just outlined. And we'll talk a little bit about sensible heat versus latent heat. And if you all have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. So we'll start out with dry bulb, which is the easiest to explain. And what better way to explain it than with this very sophisticated device here called a thermometer. Okay, so I bought this across the river at Parsons. Actually, is it Parsons Hardware? I can't remember the name of it. A little hardware store right across the river in our valley here of Marshall, North Carolina. So dry bulb temperature is the temperature of the air independent of the moisture. It doesn't matter how humid the air is or how much moisture is in the air. It does not affect the dry bulb temperature of the air. So where does the word dry bulb come from? Well, if you look at the back of a thermometer, and this is just a little plastic El Cheapo thermometer, but if you had a legit glass thermometer, you'd probably see a little bit better of a ball. But so this bulb at the bottom holds whatever fluids in there. And that fluid expands with temperature. The hotter it is, the more it expands, et cetera. It cools and it withdraws. That's the bulb of the thermometer. So that's the dry bulb temperature is whatever temperature you see. You know, when you walk outside and you have a thermometer on your front porch, 71.4-ish in our office here. So it's very nice. It's about 60 degrees outside and raining. And we'll look at that in a minute. So dry bulb temperature. So where does wet bulb come from? Well, what you do to measure the wet bulb is you take a dry bulb thermometer and you put a wet wick or a wet sock on the back of the bulb. You wrap it in a wet material, okay? Now, what happens when you have a wet bulb, a wet sock, a wet wick here? What happens is the water will evaporate into the space at a rate that is de dependent on the amount of moisture that's in the air in the space. So you could imagine if it's super, super dry in this office and we put a wet wick or a wet piece of cloth on here, that it's gonna evaporate very quickly. A lot of it's gonna evaporate. What happens when it evaporates? It provides a cooling effect, okay? So this is evaporation, that's what that means, okay? So the wet bulb temperature would be lower than the dry bulb temperature, okay? Now, the drier the air in the space or outside or wherever you're measuring it, the more evaporation occurs, the more cooling, the lower the wet bulb temperature, okay? So the wet bulb temperature is an indication of how much moisture is in the air. The higher the wet bulb, the more moisture, the less it could evaporate and cool the bulb, the lower the wet bulb is an indicator of lower moisture in the space because it's able to evaporate more in the space. Okay, so that's dry bulb versus wet bulb. For reference, to use the fancy schmancy stuff, which we use mostly today, it's about 72 degrees dry bulb in this office and 61.8, so 62 wet bulb. So as you would imagine, the wet bulb is, is lower than 
than the drivel. Okay. So that's wet ball versus dry bulb. Now let's move on to relative humidity, which is one of my favorite things because I get to use these beakers here. So, all right. So relative humidity, and then we're going to talk about humidity, which is grains per pound of dry air, two different things. Okay. So to illustrate this, we're going to show, thank you, Heather. Thanks, Heather, by the way. And thanks for uh, Courtney in the background for monitoring the chat and helping with these, these live shows. We've been doing these every Friday, most Fridays. They're a lot of fun. We really like it. So we thank you all for participating and hopefully we're bringing some value to somebody with this content. So to illustrate relative humidity, we've got three beakers here representing different volumes of air at different temperatures. So you could imagine a volume of air at 55 degrees. If you heated that up sensibly, it would expand. So this speaker would represent 75 degrees. If you heated it up again, this speaker would represent 95 degrees. So 55 degree volume of air, 75 degrees, and 95 degrees. Okay. So what does 50% relative humidity look like in these containers? If we were to represent 50% RH in here, what would it look like? Well, it would look something like this. I've done this demo many times and I've yet to spill a bunch of it everywhere. So I hope I don't do that today. I'm going to jinx myself. Okay. So that's about, so being an engineer, I got to get it like as close as I can. So that is what 55% relative humidity would look like in this container of air. Okay. So what would 70, what would 50% relative humidity look like in this speaker? Well, I know you all are a lot of smart people and you could figure that out. So it would look something like, like this. Okay. So this would be a 50% relative humidity condition at 75 degrees and no big shocker here, no breaking news, but 50% in this speaker would be halfway filled. So I'm going to try and get that dip, dip, dip. close. Okay. So that would be 50% relative humidity at 95 degrees. So here's the takeaway here. Here's the big news story. All of these represent are represented by 50% RH, all these conditions, okay? What do you notice about the amount of moisture here versus here? Or here versus here? Or here versus here, right? So the amount of moisture here is much greater than the amount of moisture here, but they have the same value of 50% relative humidity. So the takeaway here is relative humidity is not a very good indicator of the actual amount of moisture in the air, okay? It is relative to the dry bulb temperature, all right? This is a lot more water than this one here. So that's one of the issues with using relative humidity you know, we do a lot of makeup air units. We do a lot of precise humidity control applications. And one of the failings of using relative humidity is that it's not an accurate amount of moisture in the air. Okay. And Brad Schmidt had a good um, take one time we were doing this. He said, why don't you take, we'll take this and empty it. We'll take this and empty it. And he said, show what happens if you cool this air down to this temperature. What would happen to the moisture? Well, this is what would happen. And I'm not going to overflow it, but if I poured it all in there, you'd get it. It would overflow all over my desk and this would be the extra. So it would be saturated and you would get water droplets coming out of the air. And that's what happens when we get fog. Okay. The air cools the water has can't hold it can't hold the water anymore, so it's the same kind of situation here. So that is relative humidity. Okay, now let's talk about humidity for a second. I'm going to go ahead and use well, we use this one here. So humidity is the grains per pound of dry air. Okay, it's not relative to the temperature; it's the actual amount of moisture in the air. So if you took this container of air and wrung out all the water, you were able to take all the water out of this volume of air and weigh it, that would be the grains of moisture in the air. 
It's the physical amount of moisture. So if this was full halfway and we poured this into a similar beaker, it would be up here, right? So there's more grains. So the grains are a great indicator of the actual amount of moisture in the air. Okay, grains per pound of dry air. I think 7,000 grains equals a, a pound, is it? I don't know. I should know that. I've done this 100 times, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But it is a weight. It's commonly used in ammunition, weighing ammunition and other things that are really small. Okay. So to drive this, well, actually, before we do this, we're going to talk about dew point. So dew point is the temperature at which moisture will condense out of the air. Okay. So you're all H, most of you are HVAC people. So how do we remove moisture from the air? We create, unless you're using desiccants, put that in the comments if you want. Thank you, Eric. Eric Norris. What's up, my man? Eric, congratulations on your new position at Nortech. And we look forward to having you back on the podcast in the near future. Once you get your, uh, get your bearings over there. So thanks for the comment. We appreciate it. Okay, so dew point is a temperature at which moisture is going to condense out of the air. So we, in HVAC equipment, how do we remove moisture from the air? Typically, unless we're using a desk skin or something like that, is we create a surface colder in temperature than the dew point of the air, right? So if you've got 8067 coming back to your coil, the coil's 50 degrees, it's going to condense water out. It's lower than the dew point of the air, right? That's how we remove moisture with a cooling coil. So the dew point in my office is 55.7, 55.9, 56. So any surface colder than that will condense water. If my windows were colder than that, there'd be water on the inside of my windows. So to illustrate this, I've got this bowl of ice, which you can see is dripping all over my desk. The temperature is... Thirty-six point five degrees. All right, I think we got that. Thirty-six point five degrees, and if you remember, the dew point in this office is fifty-six degrees. And look what's happening. I think you could see that. There's tons of moisture all over this fancy schmancy bowl I got from our lounge. So, okay, so it's colder than the dew point of the air in this space. That's why it's condensing. Okay, so dew point, unlike relative humidity, is a very good indicator of the amount of moisture in the air, okay? And that's what we use when we talk about makeup air handlers. And we did this last week. We, we had this example of, you know, when do we go into dehumidification mode with makeup air handlers? Anything over 55 degree dew point, we typically go into dehum mode. That's why we use dew point for that exact reason and not relative humidity, because hu relative humidity is relative to the temperature of the air. To drive that point home, we're gonna look at the conditions in this office, which is a little hard to see, but it's, we already talked about this, about 72, 52, 55%, which I believe, I looked this up earlier, these numbers aren't gonna be exact, but that's approximately 53 dew points, something like that. The temperature and humidity outside is 76% RH and about 60 degrees. Now, I believe that is also between 50 and 55 degree dew point. I could look it up on the psych chart, but it's somewhere in the 50 to 55. So the point here is that the dew point in my office and outside, they're both very close. They're both within a few degrees of each other, but look at the relative humidity outside. 76% RH and 56% RH inside. So someone who doesn't know the difference between dew point or understand relative humidity might think it's crazy humid outside compared in here. Well, technically it's roughly the same amount of humidity, the same dew point. So that's what I was going to talk about with that. So that ends that portion. So let's move on to the next thing here. Now I'm getting real risky here with the hot coffee cup. So we're going to talk a little bit about sensible and latent heat, which is another area that 
you know, can get a little bit confusing to people if you're new. And by the way, if you want to learn more about this and get a deeper dive, check out our YouTube channel at HVAC-TV on YouTube, brought to you by Insight Partners and Hobbs and our whole family of brands, which you're going to see more of here on the podcast and YouTube channel, which I'm super excited about. We're working with uh, a lot of them right now. Anyway, so sensible versus latent heat, okay? So sensible heat, got this hot plate here, which is great, by the way. If you don't have one of these to keep your coffee warm, it's really nice. It's putting off heat. It says it's 195 degrees. I don't know how accurate that is, but it's very hot. Sensible heat is independent of moisture. It's just the heat you would feel coming off an electric heater. There's a light up here. There's heat coming off of it. There's a monitor in front of me. There's heat coming off of it. Sensible heat has nothing to do with the latent or the moisture in there. It doesn't matter how much moisture is in there. It's the same thing. So if I took my my reader here and zapped it, it says 236 degrees. I don't know how accurate that is, but it's hot. It's pretty hot. And if we look at the thermometer again, this is indicating the sensible heat in the space, okay? It's independent of the moisture. It doesn't care how much moisture it is. Latent heat does care about the moisture. It has to do with the energy required to change the state of the state of a gas or a fluid or water, et cetera. So when you hear latent heat, think of the moisture content in there. The more latent component, the more humid the air is, okay? And this could be illustrated by wet bulb. So the wet bulb in the office is 62-ish degrees. There's coffee in this mug. It's rather warm. And we're going to show that the late, what the latent heat is like by putting this in here. I'm not going to dip it in the coffee because I'm going to ruin my, my reader here. But you can see the wet bulb temperature is increasing. due to the latent heat component. Okay, so there's more moisture in the air. So it's putting latent heat into the air. So that's what that example is supposed to show, okay? If this were dry, you wouldn't see the wet bulb going up, okay? You just see the dry bulb. So that's kind of what that's showing there, okay? Sensible heat versus latent heat. Okay, I thought I had one more thing to talk about, but I think that's it, okay. So again, if you want to learn more about this, and I would encourage you if you're new to get a really good foundation of psychometrics, it's extremely helpful. The properties of air is kind of where you want to start. And then what I would do is get you a psychometric chart and start plotting, you know, two temperatures that you know, like you might go outside with a reader. And you might plot a couple temperatures and see what the relative humidity is. And then you might do that indoors. You might do it in the winter. You might do it in the summer. It'll give you a feel for how to move around the chart. If you're around AC equipment and you're new, it's even a better opportunity to learn psychometric processes because you can plot the outdoor air temperature, the return air temperature, the mixed air temperature, if you have the capability, the supply air temperature, RH. You get what I'm saying and you can follow it through the psychometric processes of cooling, dehumidification, and heating. That, to me, was a huge way to learn in the, in the beginning there. It was extremely, extremely helpful. So I think I've talked enough today. I so appreciate you watching. If you're listening to this podcast in the future, thank you so much. Again, the Engineers HVAC Podcast. <laughs>